Here at ASCO 2014, we'll spend a couple of interesting minutes with Michelle Orlowski as she's going to share her personal story into working in pancreatic cancer research. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. So how did this wild ride of yours start? Well, it all started when I was 14 years old. I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. And uh, after surviving that, I just became so intrigued about cancer and uh, its complexities. So uh, I went to Ryder University and uh, got my bachelor's, of bachelor's in biochemistry. Um, while I was an undergraduate, I was studying immunology. Um, the subtle cell interactions in the tumor microenvironment. And uh, from there, I moved on to Princeton University where I'm a research scientist in collaboration with the Axelrod Research Group at Jersey Shore University Medical Center in Neptune, New Jersey. And we're focusing on a serum biomarker for the early detection of pancreatic cancer. You're very passionate about pancreatic cancer because of the need that there is. Yeah. it has really poor five-year survival rate, uh, less than 6%. That's because majority of cases are diagnosed in the later stages because that's when the symptoms of the disease manifest themselves. So early diagnosis is crucial. And as it stands right now, there are no early detection biomarkers proven for use. The only marker out there that's FDA approved is CA-199. And um, it's only used for the management of advanced pancreatic cancer because it failed as a means for detecting early stages of the disease. So tell us specifically about your research. So the biomarker that we're focusing on is procarboxypeptidase A. It's the inactive zymogen form of carboxypeptidase A, which is a digestive enzyme made exclusively by the acinar cells in the pancreas, which makes it specific for uh, pancreatic pathology. Um, we've looked at three different institutions, NYU School of Medicine, the Waco Chemical Company in Japan, and Jersey Shore University Medical Center. And uh, as it stands right now, we have a 96% sensitivity rate. We picked up 24 out of 25 stage ones and twos. As for the specificity of the assay, we recently explored that through 161 volunteers from the working staff at Jersey Shore, along with 151 type 2 diabetes patients, and we've attained a minimum of 99% specificity amongst the two populations. So how will you be proceeding? Um, as it stands right now, we're in an active collaboration with the Mayo Clinic. Um, it was back in 2011, we reached out to them. There's a physician over there by the name of Shresh Cherry, who um, has published a lot of papers talking about how some pancreatic cancer causes type 2 diabetes, and that there's no real way to distinguish between regular type 2 diabetes and pancreatic cancer-induced diabetes. Our assay, you can use in type 2 diabetes patients, it doesn't interfere with the assay. So we reached out to him saying that, you know, uh, we may have the kind of marker that you're looking for. So they sent us a validation set. 50 blinded specimens, 25 early stage cancers, and 25 healthy controls. We picked up 22 out of 25 of the cancers and 22 out of 25 of the controls. So that gives an 88% sensitivity and specificity. So at that point, they were really excited about the outcome. So then they sent us a second validation set, and that's what I'm presenting here at ASCO in the um, general poster session of the non-colorectal cancers. Um, incorporating our marker alongside of CA-199 improves accuracy and sensitivity of CA-199. So it may provide some promise for the development of a screening tool for high-risk patients. And uh, studies are needed to further validate the utility of this assay. Michelle, it seems like you're on a meant-to-be path. Uh, congratulations on your work and best Thank of you. luck in the future. Thank you.